Welcome everyone. This is the fifth episode in our sensors and their microcontroller interfacing video series. We are following a project-based design workflow. To understand the complete workflow, you can watch the whole playlist. I will put the playlist link in the video description below. Here in this video, I will be discussing on the design of amplifier circuit for our thermistor and bring the output voltage to an appropriate range. Okay, viewers, let's come back to our project. The aim of the project is to design an AC system for a certain office where the environmental temperature varies from minus 5 degrees centigrade to 50 degrees centigrade. And in our previous videos, we have selected appropriate sensor and study its behavior and in our third and fourth videos we designed a bridge circuit and uh, studied its behavior via simulations by using Pratas software environment but as we have seen the voltage range from the bridge circuit varies from minus 1.4491 volt to 1.0706 volt but this is not suitable for microcontrollers. For example, our Arduino microcontroller needs voltage range either from 0 volt to 3.3 volt or in some cases from 0 volt to 5 volt. So we need to bring the voltage range from the bridge to this recommended voltage range. So in this video we will bring the voltage range from 0 volt to 5 volt by using an amplifier circuit. Before diving into the design of our amplifier circuit, let's revise some basic amplifier circuit configurations. This is the ideal op-amp and its equivalent circuit. In ideal op-amp case, the voltage at the non-inverting terminal equals the voltage at the inverting terminal. And the current into the non-inverting terminal equals to the current to the inverting terminal. And this all equals to zero. In other case, there is no current flowing into the non-inverting terminal and the inverting terminal. Or the voltage at this node equals the voltage at this node and the current flowing to this direction equals to the current to this direction equals to zero. Or there is no current flowing to this terminal and this terminal. So those are the basic laws or rules in designing an ideal op-amp circuit. Well, the first condition, that is V plus equals V minus, comes from the ideal condition where the op loop gain equals infinity. The second condition comes from the infinite in input impedance. So, based on those assumptions, we can write the transfer function of the input-output relationship in op-amp circuits. This is the inverting amplifier circuit configuration. We use this amplifier circuit to invert the sign of the input voltage and to check the magnitude as well. So applying the two basic rules of ideal amplifier, the voltage V plus at this terminal equals the voltage at this terminal. Since the voltage at the positive terminal is zero, the result equals to zero. V plus equals V minus equals zero. Okay. From the second case of ideal open, the current flowing into the negative terminal equals to the current flowing into the positive terminal. That is here I in plus IF equals zero. There is no current flowing into this direction equals zero. Now let's substitute for V plus and V minus and find this. Now let's substitute for the currents and get this simplified equation and solve for V out and we find V out equals minus RF over R1 times VA. So this is the formula for the inverting amplifier circuit or the transfer function in other words. This is the second type of operational amplifier circuit configuration, the non-inverting amplifier. Again, by using the two ideal conditions, the current to the non-inverting terminal equals to the current to the inverting terminals 
equals to zero and the voltage at the then inverting terminal equals to the voltage at the inverting terminal and equals to Vn because the voltage at this node equals to Vn. Now solving for the currents I plus and I minus V out minus V minus over Rf minus V minus over R1 equals to zero. Now solving for V out with output voltage equals to 1 plus Rf over R1 times V. This is a transfer function of the formula describing the non-inverting amplifier. The non-inverting amplifier do not change the sign of the input voltage, but it changes the magnitude of the input voltage. So we use this circuit configuration for applications that need no sign change, but needs magnitude adjustment. The third type of operational amplifier circuit configuration is a differential amplifier. As you can see from here, V plus by using voltage divider rule is V2 times RF over R1 plus RF. Now, by using the second ideal condition for op-amp, I1 plus IF is equals to zero, or I1 is equals to minus IF. From this, we can get V minus or the voltage at the inverting terminal equals V1 times RF plus V out times R1 over R1 plus RF. Now, by using the first condition of ideal op -amp, the voltage at the inverting terminal and the voltage at the non-inverting terminal equals to R equal. By using the first ideal condition for an op -amp, V plus equals V minus. By equating this equation and this equation, we can get V out is equals to RF over R1 times V2 minus V1, the difference of the two input voltages, V1 and V2. This amplifier circuit is usually used to remove offsets below zero or above zero. Particularly in our project, we will use this amplifier circuit. The fourth type of basic amplifier circuit configuration is a voltage follower amplifier. In voltage follower amplifier, there is no effect on the input voltage. That is, we will get exactly our input voltage on the output terminal. That is, V out equals VA. But this circuit is applicable for buffering or to isolate the two circuits. For example, we use this buffer circuit to isolate our bridge circuit from the amplifier circuit. For our amplifier circuit, we have ETH from the Wilson bridge as an input and VO, the output of the amplifier. ETH from the bridge circuit has a range from minus 1.4491 volt to 1.0706 volt. And we need this voltage to be in the range from 0 to 5 volt with the help of our amplifier. We want to use this circuit configuration for our amplifier, that is the differential amplifier of the formula V out is equal to V out is equal to this. One. Rf over R1 times V2 minus V1. Now we want V out to be VO and V1 is equal to ETH. V1 is equal to ETH. That is the output of the bridge circuit is connected to this one and V2 is assumed to be VC or V2 is used as offset elimination. As you can see from the formula, now substitute windows VO is equal to RF over R1 times VC minus ETH. From this, you can see that ETH is inverted. That is, VC should be positive. Therefore, the circuit polarity and the sign of this equation implies that ETH is inverted. Therefore, VC should remove this voltage, minus 1.0706 volt. We see the offset below zero volt. Therefore, we need to use VC is equal to 1.0706 in order to use this circuit configuration. But note that there is no unique design of an application. You may choose another circuit configuration, but the output should correspond to a given application. Now, using this now, by using the above circuit configuration, or the amplifier, gives zero volt 
for an input of 1.0706 and 5 volt for an input of 1 minus 1 1.4491. Those are the extreme points. Now, find the equation of a straight line in the slope is this one, minus 1.9844. And the line equation is this one, minus 1.9844x plus 2.1244 or 1.9844 times 1.0706 minus x by using the input and output parameters of our amplifier circuit BO corresponds to y is equal to 1.9844 into 1.0706 minus ETH, the input or in place of x. This is the equation governing our amplifier circuit. Now, our design is completed with those specifications RF over R1, the ratio equals 1.9844 with VC. The offset equals 1.0706 volt. So you can see a negative RF and R1 in order to guarantee this relationship. Therefore, in this stage, we finished our amplifier circuit design for our thermistor. In the initial stages of the video series, we have selected the thermistor and studied its behavior. Then we designed a bridge circuit. But the output of the bridge circuit is not suitable for the microcontroller. Therefore, we need to share it to have an output voltage that's suitable to interface it with our Arduino microcontroller specifically with a range 0 to 5 volt, 5 volt. And we completed this stage. The next part of the video series will focus how to interface this circuit, our design circuit, to the microcontroller. The sixth video basically focuses on the simulation. We will simulate the overall system up to this stage in a total software environment. Now let's see the straight line relationship between the transistor to the output of the amplifier circuit. Those are the extreme points. Minus 5 degrees centigrade, 5 volt, and 50 degrees centigrade, 0 volt. The amplifier gives 5 volt at minus 5 degrees centigrade and 0 volt at 50 degrees centigrade. Now, to find, let's find the straight line equation between the temperature and the output voltage from the amplifier. And this is the relationship between V0 and T. V0 is equal to minus 1 over 11 T plus 50 over 11. Or solving for T, T is equal to um, 50 minus 11 V0. We will compute the temperature from the output voltage of the amplifier. We will see in the next videos how to perform this programmatically. And the Arduino will perform this computation. For example, at 0 volt, the temperature is 50 degrees centigrade. And at 5 volt, the temperature is minus 5 degree centigrade. Okay, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe the channel. Feel free to leave your comment.